touch on everybody agriculture science and technology this is the second video first has already been given to you on your whatsapp it was recorded at our college now that was the first introduction only now we are going to start the first topic that is wheat we have got many topics as per the new syllabus you can purchase a book of agriculture uh, science and technology published by maharashtra state board uh, of secondary and higher secondary education please don't purchase book from private publishers now the first topic uh, that is wheat for so this wheat it is uh, one of the traditional crops and uh, in this traditional crop this why it is called why wheat is called traditional crop because it is cultivated almost in all over the world not only in india but all over the world because it, it is used in large scale for various reasons that are studied in that one now this wheat in every crop you have to study botanical name if it comes species there are various botanical names you shall see in the next slide but all wheat species belong to pithecum species family is uh, gramini and uh, origin we have to study origin of every crop origin means it is the place where the crop was originated for the first time so that was that is called origin sometimes if we don't know the origin of the particular crop we can understand it from the place where it is grown on large scale so uh, this uh, wheat it is family is gramini and uh, in case of origin there are two kinds of wheat one is hard wheat second is soft wheat hard wheat is originated in abyssinia while soft wheat is originated in north west india south west part of afghanistan and some parts of asia now what is this soft wheat and hard wheat this uh, hard wheat is used for industrial purposes for making bread and cheese while soft wheat is a that wheat which is used for daily consumption in our daily meal now uh, in this let us go to the end of the slide what are the species of wheat there are five species of wheat first is a triticum astivium second triticum durum third is triticum dicotum fourth is triticum satricotum and fifth is triticum perigidum now these are the different uh, species but in our country and in uh, most of the other countries also Triticum astivium is grown on large scale, and this is also called, or this is a soft variety, or soft species. So triticum astivium is uh, grown on large scale. Uh, are you in the position to see the um, slides? If you are okay, please raise your hand. If you are seeing slides, yes. you can note down the points from slides or i will try to give it on my youtube but that will take time now another uh, now these are the species now what are the uses of wheat this is asked for this to mark how this uh, uh, while remembering uses or that is called economic uses we should understand that these crops or most of the crops we know they are familiar to us and uh, we can 
no their uses from our daily life also so in this uh, wheat it is a part of our daily meal daily food and uh, so we particularly use it for making of chapati and other products are also they are made out of wheat but wheat is a largely consumed in uh, the state of punjab haryana up and and mp in maharashtra jowar is consumed on large scale wheat is consumed in the second number uh, because the production of wheat is uh, less compared with uh, other crops in maharashtra so wheat is a part of our staple food daily food secondly uh, wheat is the richest source of uh, starch protein fat vitamin and mineral if one consumes wheat along with milk that it becomes whole food whole food food means if there is something lacking in wheat that can be covered from milk so wheat is a research a research to for the energy it is used in the form of breads and biscuits and pastry products bakery products and even some uh, canned products or even in baby foods also then uh, in case of hard wheat this is used for making of rava that we call we use it for consumption of that with ma and sira and what not so rava it is a uh, maida and rava there are two parts can be separated from wheat flour so rava is made then other sevai and suji and what not there are different local products are there made out of wheat secondly or third we can say that straw straw of wheat straw is the remaining part of wheat that is called straw is whatever we consume and what is left that is part of the plant that is called straw so this straw is used for uh, thatching of roof thatching of roof means the um, hutments are there and on the these hutments this straw can be used to cover the roofs then uh, mulching it is also used as a mulching material what is mulching material that we are going to see later on but mulching means it is a cover uh now uh, what is the mulching in this case of mulching mulching is covering it between the two lines of a crop suppose we are growing a banana and in case of banana if there is a more evaporation due to hot sun then between the banana plants we can spread straw of this uh, wheat and that will work as anti evaporant means that will stop that will prevent evaporation of uh, this uh, water from soil then most important thing about uh, this is that it contains gluten gluten it is it contains gluten uh, that is mistakenly written not thanks there is nothing like that so it contains gluten and this is used for good quality chapati how do we prepare chapati we take wheat flour and uh, out of that wheat flour we add some water and we make a dough pita ka unda karne hota hai ukde wala mein so that dough is made and then we flatten that and we make the chapati chapati kaise karta apan latrun karo to latne sathi je ahe sapat sapat karne so for that purpose only gluten which is the part of the which is a nutritional part of it that makes the dough soft and we can flatten it fakt gaha cha chapata karta yata jwari chi bhakar karta yati jwari chi chapati karta yati lagta yat ne jwari karan ka jwari madhe gluten nahi so dusre kahi product mujhe nahi so wheat contains gluten so it gives very soft uh, dough soft chapati or soft flour Okay, now let us go to another slide. Soil and uh, climatic requirements we have to study. Now, in this soil requirement, there are some common factors in uh, soil requirements in you know, all crops that uh, every crop needs uh, soil. It has good water holding capacity. It should also have a uh, good drainage capacity. not only water holding capacity we have written only uh, water holding capacity but it should also have 
गुड ड्रेनेज कैपेसिटी सो वेन इट हैज गुड ड्रेनेज कैपेसिटी देन दैट सॉइल यूजफुल फॉर अलग इन दिस केस ऑफ व्हीट देर इज द इम्पोर्टेंट थिंग दैट इट कैन बी ग्रोन इन ऑल टाइप्स ऑफ सॉइल फॉर एक्स नंबर थ्री यू कैन सी दैट इट इज इट कैन बी ग्रोन फ्रॉम लाइट टू हेवी सॉइल means it can be grown in light soil medium soil heavy soil we have studied these these different types of soil so during the rem stack we have studied so light soil means that soil which contains more content of uh, sand uh, heavy soil is that soil which contains more clay and uh, medium soil that is also called loamy soil that is also called silty soil so medium soil contains almost equal proportion of sand and clay so wheat can be grown in light to heavy soil but it should be well drained well drained means the uh, that point number 2 and 4 is almost repeated so there should be no water logging condition pani jama hone sa pune if water is logged in the soil in the field then it will make the crop deliver and the last one that ph of soil should be 5.5 7.5. You, you know detail about pH. That uh, when the, when it is seven, that is neutral. Below seven, it is acidic. Above seven, it is alkaline. You know, you know that. So this requires a uh, uh, 5.5 to 7.5 pH. So uh, you can remember that in every slide, in every point, uh, there are four answers are given, or answers will be given in points. So here. Second is the climate. Soil may be asked for two marks. Climate for two marks separately. Now this uh, this is a wheat is a temperate crop. There are three kinds of crops: temperate crop, tropical crop, and subtropical crop. We have studied in last year. Tropical crop is uh, that crop which requires uh, more temperature, atmospheric temperature. While the temperate crop is that crop which requires cold climate. So the tropical crop is that crop which uh, requires medium or little bit warm, not very hot, not very cold. Then uh, optimum temperature, atmosphere. If this optimum temperature means climatic temperature, atmospheric temperature, it should be seven to twenty-one degrees centigrade for proper growth. And if the temperature goes below twenty-five and below seven, then it will Cause the drastic effects. If the south picture, the mean Turkish picture, just temperature will be low. So I will. There will be no proper growth, or the growth will be affected. This is the thing. So uh, and last and second thing is that rainfall. Rainfall should be 700 to 1600 yam yam. This is the average rainfall. Then uh, high humidity. If there is a high humidity. Then it will cause fungal diseases. Actually, high humidity uh, causes fungal diseases in almost all crops. Means none of the crops can tolerate uh, heavy or high humidity. So humidity is measured in percentage. Humidity should not be more than seventy-five percent. Otherwise, it will cause damage. Okay. Now let us go to the another slide. Preparatory tillage. Now this is a very easy part of the new topic. That preparatory tillage means land preparation. How we can prepare the land? That is called preparatory tillage. So for that now this wheat uh, uh, seeds require compact seed bed. There are different kinds of seed beds. Compact seed bed, loose seed bed, raised seed bed, flat seed bed. Now, compact seed bed means that seed bed that after making uh, uh, plowing, harrowing, all these things, the land is leveled, and then it is cleaned, and then it, it is it becomes compact seed bed. There is no special compact uh, procedure to be done in compact seed bed. So don't worry about that word. Second thing that uh, it requires two or three shallow crosswise plowings. We know plowing is not very common. Crosswise means Uh, east to west, south to north. That is called crosswise plowing. 
So this, why it is crosswise flowing to be done? That when crosswise flowing is done, then the soil will become more and more loose and porous. There will be more aeration, there will be more drainage, there will be more water holding capacity. So crosswise flowing is necessary. If only one side flowing is done, for example, uh, south to north flowing is done, then it will work as water channels. Because of heavy rainfall, water will flow through the uh, this uh, flowed area and that will cause loss to the soil. Then flat beds are prepared by the bird farmers. Bird farmers uh, means that is a particular implement. We will see if you come to college. That one. The bird farmer is that implement which makes the uh, soil uh, a little bit uh, leveling. Leveling is made. And then irrigation channels are also made. Okay, then uh, sowing season and direction. This may also be asked for. Remember that whatever slide we are studying, every slide is of two marks, roughly. You can understand like that. Now the sowing season. Now uh, you know that the uh, sowing of wheat has been started in our Maharashtra because this is a cold climate, it requires top temperature. Temperate climate means the Thandicha Dusa Genarakita, this is a rabi crop. So uh, there are two kinds of varieties, tall varieties and dwarf varieties. So this is a uh, uh, variety, this, uh, this tall varieties are grown in October, November. October, November means last week of October, first week of November. Or you can understand 15th of October to 15th of November. Then dwarf varieties are grown in November. So this October, November that is the season of sowing. And the sowing direction, now sowing direction should be north to south. Why this is for north to south? It is for maximum sunlight penetration. You have, uh, during your school days, up to 10, you have stood in lines for prayer. At that time, if you stand in the lines from east to west direction, you will get sunlight on one side only. If you stand south to north, if you stand east to west, then sunlight will be on front student only, not on the back. If you stand south to north, you will get sunlight on one side, but that will be sunlight for all students, all plants like that. When north-south direction swing is done, the plant will get maximum sunlight. That is called maximum penetration of sunlight. And this is uh, important for, uh, uh, you know, photosynthesis and uh, production. Then, uh, sowing methods and spacing. Now, in this sowing methods, uh, there are different methods of sowing we have already studied last year, but the major here in this case, a pruning method and broadcasting method. Two methods are usual. Now, drilling method is what? See the drill is usual. The last time we have done the program, the fun, the fun. Means if there is a it is called different means there are two polter, two tips are attached to the seed bowl. When we apply seed on the bowl, that will go through two tubes into the soil. That is called a dupan. If there are three tubes, tipan. So drilling is used. Now this seed drill is a common method uh, used in almost all crops because this is a uh, Because uh, this is uh, used in all crops because it takes less time, less laborer, less money, more money, many things are there. And this is a good method. Second is broadcasting method. It is broadcasting of seed by hands. Means a person or laborer spreads the seed in the soil. But this is not a good method. But it can be followed in the area where there is a larger area for sowing and time available is less. Laborers number is less. Mansa Kami has to area to pursue, Kami will have to write a center, broadcasting karma, that is, that will be adaptable method. Spacing, we have studied that spacing means it is a distance between plant to plant and row to row, that is called spacing, it is kept at the time of sowing. So here, uh, plant to plant and row to row spacing depends upon different factors, which factors are there? Like uh, soil factor, 
if soil is rich, heavy soil, clay soil, then uh, more distance can be kept. Likewise, it depends upon irrigation and many things that you will see later. Now, spacing, uh, there in this case, optimum spacing. Now, there are two kinds of wheat grown irrigated wheat, rain fed wheat. Now, irrigated wheat, the spacing is 22.5. This is a row to row spacing. But plant to plant, not even, plant to plant spacing is not even. But this plant to plant spacing can be kept 15 to 20 centimeters. This is a plant to plant spacing. So, 22, when there is a larger figure is there, that is a row to row. And when small figure is there, that is a plant to plant. 22.5 cm is the space between plant, uh, row to row, 15 to 20 between plant to plant. In case of rain fed, the thing is same, it is a uh, rain fed plant, 30 cm between the rows, 20 cm between plants. This, this, uh, this spacing can be changed as per our need. Okay. So, uh, remember that this is the important thing. Then uh, let us go to the another slide. Depth of soil. Now germination of uh, any crop, any seed depends upon depth of soil. If the depth is kept more, then the seed will, will germinate but it will not come out of, above the soil. If the depth is less, then there will be no germination, the seed will be consumed by uh, insects and uh, then there will be great loss. So, uh, generally, in general, in all crops, the minimum depth is 3 cm, maximum depth is 10 cm. So, here in case of irrigated wheat, depth is 3 to 5 cm, in rain fed, 8 to 10 cm. If you write 8 to 9 cm, then it is also 10. It is a depth of 10. And in dwarf varieties, the spacing can be kept 5 to 6 cm. Samjha lagla na? Saapur kara samjha lagla na? Can you follow me? Okay. So, depth, why it is important depth? Because if the depth is less or more, then there will be no proper germination. Come to another seed rate. Now, in this case of seed rate, uh, there are different, particularly two kinds of variety, irrigated and rain fed. Now, in that irrigated also, there are two kinds, gold seeded and dark varieties. Now, in gold seeded varieties, the seed rate is the highest, 125 to 150 kg per hectare. Now, this kilogram per hectare, it can be written in different manners like this also. You can write kilogram HA means hectare. For a dwarf variety, the seed rate can be kept, it is 100 to 125 kilogram per hectare. This is 1 This is 1 quintal seed lakhte, roughly. And the rain fed the seed rate is 75 to 80 kilogram per hectare. Now remember that in a rain fed, rain fed means what? No irrigation is given, that is called rain fed. Whatever plant growth is there, it depends only on the rainfall water available. That is called rain fed. So in rain fed, seed rate is also less. And in rain fed, the spacing is more. See in the first slide that uh, de depth depth is also depth more, spacing is more. In rain fed crop, spacing is more, depth is more, but seed rate is less. And the adverse is the or the situation is the reverse in case of uh, other crops. Uh, sorry, in case of other uh, varieties or other conditions. Okay, now let us go to another seed treatment. Now, in this case of seed treatment, seed treatment is to be given uh, before storing of the seed. Secondly, seed treatment is given before sowing. Sakhruluk kartana karnacha adi ani perinicha adi. Before sowing, seed treatment can be given. Now, let us see number one sun heat means drying in the sun. 
उन्हामध्ये दोन दिवस वाढवायचे खूप आहे ते आपण करतो खेडेगावमध्ये करतो सगळीकडे करतो सो वेन द व्हीट सीड विच इज यूज फॉर सोईंग शुड बी ड्राईड इन द सन फॉर टू डेज वट इज यूज दॅट विल कंट्रोल यूज स्मॅच दॅट विल कंट्रोल यूज स्मॅच सेकंड द सेकंड ट्रीटमेंट इज गिवन जस्ट बिफोर सोईंग कारबारी और व्हिटा व्हॅक्स और बेनालेट नाव दीज आर द नेम्स ऑफ द दीज आर द नेम्स ऑफ द केमिकल्स ट्रेड नेम्स ऑफ द केमिकल्स नाव वॉट इज द रेट द दे आर गिवन ॲट द रेट ऑफ वन टू वन पॉईंट टू फाईव्ह ग्रॅम पर के जी ऑफ सीड देर ऑल्सो यू कॅन राईट ऑब्लिक पर के जी ऑफ सीड फॉर टू प्लॉट मीन्स वॉट वन ग्रॅम ऑफ कारबारी प्लस वन के जी ऑफ सीड सो दिस कारबारी इज मिक्स व्हेरी प्रॉपरली and that is used for sowing now this is to be done this uh, after seed treatment sowing is to be done within 24 hours tumhi aaj treatment dilin 4 divasane peru lagla so that chemical will lose its power lose its utility so carboxyl or carboxyl beta vax beta net either of them on the x axis for the treatment agrosome monosome hiram Now what are these, these things? These are all called OMC. Not OMG. These are called OMC. What is OMC? Organomercurial compound. Means these compounds, all these compounds have organic, no, no, sorry, mercury. Organomercurial compound. Mercury, these are the mercurial compounds. Mercury, para hai. So, agrosome, capsum, or aram. So, this is the seed of pigment. This is the pigment, sun-drying, carbaryl, or this uh, vitavax, or like that. Now, we have got only 10 minutes to go. Now, varieties. There are different varieties. Kalyan Sona, Sona Lika, Maal Vika, Sivor, HD2189, HD4502. so this hd varieties are hybrid variety hybrid dwarf these are hybrid dwarf varieties so uh, these varieties are evolved particularly in punjab and uh, they have got or they produce grains on larger quantity now in this uh, another thing that was about this just but if all the varieties please remember kalyan sona सोनालिका मालविका त्यांचे नाव आहेत एच डी एम वन फाय नाईन थ्री एच डी एम फाय वन फाय फाय थ्री ओके देन अनदर थिंग दॅट इरिगेशन इट डिपेंड्स अपॉन डिफरंट थिंग्स दॅट ग्रोथ स्टेजेस इरिगेशन व्हेज टू बी गिवन डिपेंड्स अपॉन growth stages depends upon kind of soil depend upon depends upon season depends upon water availability many things are there but there are different growth stages one is crown root initiation stage means that when we uh, when we sow the seed after sometimes when the plant grows then there will be roots root initiation and uh, aerial roots are formed those are called crown roots roots in the soil are different roots in the air are different aerial roots are formed second is tillering stage tillering stage means from one one place two or three plants are grown that is called tillering stage and jointing stage means there are joints are formed it way to play up and some some kanda asta asa kanda ta hota then those are called jointing then flowering stage flowers are formed and grain forming stage so irrigation is generally given at the interval of 15 days so out of these grain filling is most important all these stages are important but grain filling is most important for growth of wheat crop then intercultivation intercultivation means we have to uh, remove the weeds and uh, that the removing of weeds can be done at least uh, up to 40 days of uh, growth of plant later on if weeding is not done there will be no much effect on the growth of plant but up to 40 days it is important 
So reading means reading of reads can be done by using hand tools like sickles or uh, the hand hose are there, there are different hose are also available and generally two readings are given, two readings. Please add 15 days interval or 20 days interval, reading can be done. If uh, laborers are not available, we can use herbicides. Those are also called herbicides. Herbicides, any one herbicide can be used like isoprofuron, pentazane, metasulfuron. So any of the herbicide can be used and uh, that we can control the this uh, weeds in the field. Let us go to the another one, crop rotation and intercropping. Crop rotation means we have studied last year that it is a recurrent succession of different crops in the same piece of land. It means that one after another and different crops are there. We should not continue the same crop for, the, for example. Java, Java, Red Java. Throughout the year in three seasons, Java is grown. That is not crop rotation. But we have to take different crops in different seasons. For example, in Kharif season, we can grow mood or soya bean and then we can grow wheat. In Rabi, wheat. In uh, uh, Kharif, soya bean or mood. Or we can grow paddy, bajra, jawar, maize in Kharif crop. And uh, then uh, in Rabi season, we can grow wheat. Next, lastly, that intercropping. Intercropping means that uh, between the two rows of the plant, uh, what happens that weeds grow and insects may also uh, grow there. We have to remove that. So intercropping is to be done by uh, uh, intercropping uh, is to be done to control these things by cultivating other crops. For example, in case of wheat, we can grow mustard, we can grow potato, we can grow bran, we can grow pea. This, for example, four lines of wheat, two lines of bran, four lines of wheat again, two bran, two lines of pea or bran. Please, until alternative ways, in alternative ways, we can grow the crops. That is called intercropping. Then plant protection. In this plant protection, there are pests and diseases. So these ants, one is white ants, that is called termite. Now this termite uh, can be controlled. Termite feeds on the plant. Remains in soil during the day, during night comes out and feed on the plant. Control spraying of 5% and leave. Or we can spray chloro fiery first. Cutworm, another is there, it, control, it cuts the plants during night. Control is same, application of 5% and leave in the soil uh, or undrain powder at the rate of 125 kg before sowing for a before sowing. Then stain ink borer. This borer feeds on the leaves and stain control. We have to spray chlorofiriphos and the dead plants are to be removed. Then uh, another that is the uh, rats. Uh, rats are very dangerous pests. They cut the plant and make the burrows. So we have to use zinc phosphide, zinc sulfide or self tablet. So we have to use the traps also and uh, when so this zinc sulfide or zinc phosphorus for example it is used in the food and uh, tables are made buta karacha, gold karacha and the borrow buddha so that's made that. Diseases, there are different diseases one is a wheat rust rust means dust remember that what is the shortcut rust means dust now in this case yellow Rust means yellow powder is formed, black rust means black powder is formed, brown rust means brown powder is formed on the leaves, and these spots later on become black. There will be no photosynthesis, no growth. Control, we have to grow resistant varieties, or we can spray mantle head or zanid. Or we have to spray this 15 days after sowing. Then rust control, just we have to do. Then diseases, plaque smut, another disease. Plaque smut means uh, there is no formation of grain that will become like a plaque. And 100% uh, loss is there. We have to give seed treatment by agroson, monoson, sergeson, captain, all 
any one of organic mercury component. Then most much in this case black powder is found, 100% loss is there, control is saved. Then harvesting, harvesting is done after 4 to 4.5 months when the it is mature grains develop. And very important point that grains contain 18 to 22 percent moisture at the time of harvesting. Then at that time it is harvesting is done by sickle, then it is dried and by using pressure it can be threshing uh, is done. And it is stored at the time of storage the seed should have 12 percent moisture. These two points are important. At the time of harvesting moisture content in the seed is 18 to 22 and at the time of storage the moisture content is less that is only 20 percent. Then uh, um, yield, rain fed is in, yield is less 6 to 9 quintal per hectare, irrigated yield is good 25 to 40 quintal and in Mexican varieties the yield is 40 to 50 quintal per hectare. So this is all about uh, wheat cultivation and uh, we have got less time so uh, we have to go in hurry.